I thought it might be interesting for you guys to see how I'm checking for backlash and uh, analyzing the results so that we're getting. Um, so I have in our internal version of Lightburn, this is the debug build, um, we have a switch here in the preview that turns on the backlash simulation. And so if I rewind all the way back to the beginning and we zoom in on the box, so this is showing my, it's, I think it's set to two millimeters of backlash. It might only be one, I can't remember, but it's huge. It's way larger than you would ever have in a real machine. Um, and then the little red dot is the crosshair that you normally see that is the position of the laser. And so if I start uh, going forward, you can see, and if I turn on travel moves, so you can see that's where the laser started and this is where it's moving. And as soon as it hits the end of this box, uh, or the edge of the box, it's going to start pulling the box with it. And the middle of the box is what's actually being output by the laser. Um, so we'll scan forward a little bit. And so right there, this is the first point at which backlash actually is a visible problem. Um, if I scan forward, uh, here we're getting to the edge of the shape that we're starting to draw. And now it's drawing the shape and you can see the very, very first thing that it does is change direction in the x-axis. So it's now going in the opposite direction and still going down. So at first, because it's still going down, it's pulling this center of the box down with it, but it's not moving in the same direction in y, or sorry, in x. So we aren't actually moving the laser output yet because we haven't gotten to the other side of this box. So if your laser is a little bit loose or you've got a little bit of play in the gears, every time you change direction, you have to take up that slack until uh, it's tight again and then the, the actual laser beam starts moving. And so that's what's happening here. And so this is the path being sent by the controller to your motors. It's the path that the motors believe they are taking. Um, this is the path that the laser head is actually drawing. And as you get to the next direction change, which happens right here on the x-axis, um, you'll see again, now we're starting to move this way through the backlash box but the laser head itself is just continuing to draw a vertical line because we haven't eaten up that slop in the other direction. And so once we get to the other side of this box, now it starts pulling the laser head. And so that's why when you see files that have been output by uh, machines that are loose, they look like these weird ovals with flat sides um on top bottom and sides and they'll have strange gaps in them and so on and if i run this simulation all the way to the end and you look at individual shapes in here you can see there's gaps between where it starts and ends um, gaps between where it starts and ends this one same deal this one same you may actually get shapes that are quote unquote correct um, but it's just a matter of chance uh, based on which direction the laser starts and ends and which way that it enters the shape and exits the shape and so on. So the hide backlash optimization, if I turn that on and rerun the preview, you'll notice that all of these shapes now, even though they still look like hell, um, are actually sealed, meaning the start point and end point actually lines up on every one of these shapes uh, if you look at it. Um, and it does this by deciding how to enter the shape and where to change directions so that the backlash is minimized at the start and end points or the start and end points have the same backlash. And that's probably the better way to think of it. So in this case, the laser was moving downward and to the right when it started this shape. And so... It continues moving downward um, and changes direction because we have to, um, but it ends the shape moving downward and to the right. So the start point and the end point actually match. They meet up because we started the shape moving down and to the right. And if we end the shape going in that same direction, the backlash will match. And then we head over to the next shape and the next shape we arrive at however it is that we get there, um, and we're moving slightly upward. You can see we're going upward and to the right again. 
So when this shape is finished, we want to be moving upward and to the right in order for the backlash to be minimized. And so again, you can see here when we get to the end of this shape, we're going upward and to the right. And so the start point matches the end point. Um, we head over to the next shape and the process repeats. And so in this case, we were going down and to the right. And so at the end of this shape, we're gonna go down and to the right again, and so on, and so on, and so on. And this just works. Uh, as long as your entry and exit directions for a shape are the same, you should be able to not, or you should not be able to see um, the misalignment where the start points and end points meet. Um, from everything that I've read and researched, this is correct. Now, that's not to say that I'm perfect and that this is actually right. I could be wrong. I'm willing to accept that I'm wrong. Um, but this is a reasonable simulation of backlash. And uh, according to my simulation, the output is correct. So um, until I find a way to prove myself wrong, I'm going to believe that this is working and the people that I've sent it to so far, aside from one user who's been having trouble, um, have all given back uh, very positive results and said that the output is great.